Hi, Solo Sue here, and this is going to be a bit of a departure. We need to talk about security on Princess. I had a problem with someone on the Emerald Princess on my 19-day Panama Canal cruise, and based on that experience, I want to discuss three areas that are really security risks, particularly for solo female travelers while on the ship. It's not quite as bad on other ships, but on the Emerald Princess, it was a real problem. We had a very active group of solo travelers to the extent where they actually had our solo traveler meet up every night on the Princess Patter. And so we would go to the same place and we would all meet and we wound up with, I think about 36 to 40 people in the group. And if you've ever attended any of these solo meetups, you know that's a huge number. It was a really, for the most part, a good group. And we did lots of activities together, including going to dinner together. And, you know, you'd see the people around the ship and, and socialize. And it was nice for the most part. However, a few days in, we had someone new join us and uh, he wound up being a problem for me. And I'll get to that a little later. First, I want to talk about some of the things that I see as problems for physical security on this princess ship and potentially others. So the first one is that the medallion readers weren't working properly on the Emerald Princess and either they couldn't read the medallions or something was wrong with the medallion. I don't know what it was, but on many occasions, not just my medallion, it wouldn't read the medallion. And so they would, the crew member would then ask you for your cabin number as a way of accessing your record and being able to, you know, charge whatever it is you're charging to it, whether it's a drink or something else. The only problem is that basically means you have to disclose your cabin number regardless of who you're with. Princess really needs to have a way of not requiring people to tell you what their, basically, what their cabin number is to be able to access services. If you look at the way hotels handle security, and this is something very similar that's basically just a floating hotel, they will typically write the room number on your, uh, the envelope that your card key goes into, and they will point to it and tell you this is your room number, but they won't say it out loud. And the reason for that is that there have been numerous instances where that security risk has been exploited and people have, by eavesdropping, gone to the room and either caused some kind of problem for the person in the room or they have, you know, tried to break into the room, whether it is to cause problems or to... Um, with the physical security or whether it is to steal, doesn't really matter. There's a reason why hotels know that you don't just give out the room numbers. And this is no different. And so the fact that they required it on numerous occasions meant that this person was able to get my room number without me giving it to him. I actively tried not to give it to him several times because he asked for it several times. And I would shine him on each time and, and not give it to him. But just being at the right place at the right time when I ordered a drink or a whatever meant that he was able to get my room number without my real consent. So, and he used it. So more on that later, but in the meantime, that is the first one. There are three main problems I saw. That was the first one. The second one is the display outside of your cabin will show your full name by default. And you can go to guest services and ask them to change that. And they will change it to, I believe, just your first name. I don't think they will let you just completely remove your name. I don't think so. Um, I could be wrong on that. If anyone else has done that, you know, put something in the comments. If they know what deck you're on and they're patient, they could walk from room to room and see. Because anytime someone with a medallion walks by one of these displays, it shows your picture and your name, your full name by default. So all they would have to do to find your app, if they're, you know, willing to, all they would have to do is, is walk around that deck until they found it. But there's an easier way for them. And that's the third problem is the princess app. So there's this thing called shipmates chat, and you can exchange cabin numbers and it will, you know, it will uh, let you guys chat and stuff. So it's really nice if you're with a party and you want to, you know, make sure that you can find each other. The other thing is that, so there, there's two issues. The first one with the shipmates chat is that you can type in a first name. All you need is a first name. 
You type in a first name and you tell it to search and it gives you this list of everybody with that first name and it includes their picture and their full name. And so obviously you can get someone's full name that way. And the other thing with that is that you then can ask to connect and by default, it says that you are willing to share your location with that person. And if you don't pay attention, you could wind up, or, you know, if you find out later that this is not someone you want that power over you, then this is also a problem. I did not connect with this person on Shipmates Chat, but that was why he was asking for it at the time, he said. He wanted to connect with me and, and with everybody else in the group. And I wasn't willing to do that. Um, but yeah, if you don't uncheck that, then at any time they can pull up, uh, you know, under the, the deck plans, they can pull it up and it'll show a picture of you wherever you are on the ship. And that's also a problem. So these are the three main things that I think they need to address. Uh, because privacy is a real problem when you are traveling by yourself. Um, and even if it's a female who's not by herself, she may not want that information out. Uh, it's probably less of a risk for men, but I'm sure that, you know, it happens to men too, where they don't want this information posted this way. So what happened with this person? As I said, in the course of things, they were able to get my cabin number. They were, um, they were pretty much glued to my side whenever they could be. And at one point, they were at a group dinner with me, and I had mentioned uh, the group was talking about which Captain Circle party we were going to go to. And so I mentioned which one I was going to go to, probably if I could get my reservation changed because I had a conflict with where I was originally assigned. And when it came time for that Captain Circle party, you know, it's on deck seven. And if you're familiar with the layout of the Emerald Princess or any of the ships in this class, Deck 7 is pretty much a thoroughfare. Uh, it's a way of getting from one end of the ship to the other easily. Uh, if you don't feel like especially going, you know, all the way along through the cabins, then this is a way of getting from one end of the ship to the other that's very commonly used. It's also very visible. You can go down, you can see from one end of the hallway a good bit down. It's got, you know, the ocean medallion, area. It's got um, the photos. It's got the steakhouse, uh, you know, so you can see a good ways down. And so I get down there in line and I'm not in line more than a few seconds. And I glanced around to kind of, you know, scope out the area to make sure that I was hoping I wasn't going to see him, but he was there and he wound up right behind me in line and started talking to me. And so he had told me while we were in line that he had shown up to my cabin uninvited in the morning and because I had privacy on the, the displays you have a choice of privacy or make up my room and privacy basically is do not disturb and I had that on in the morning and he said because I had that on I, 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 you, you, I didn't feel you know I should knock and so he left but he still went to my cabin uninvited and I just didn't know about it. Um, when they let us all in, I went all the way to the front because I always go to the front for these things because I'm filming them. And he joined me. And um, the one thing about the Captain Circle Party is that there are free drinks and the people are walking around with free drinks, you know, the, the, the staff. And they have trays of drink that, that you can choose from or you can make your own orders. And apparently this person's whole goal for this whole party was to down as many drinks as possible. And in the space of that one hour period, I saw him down at least eight drinks, probably more. That's a lot of drinks for a short time. At one point he turns to me and he goes, so are you scared? Uh, he says, are, am I scaring you yet? And I said, no, you're not scaring me, but I am a bit concerned about the rate of consumption here. And he's like, oh, don't worry, I'm a, I'm a fun drunk. And it's like, yeah. And later on, you know, shortly after, uh, there was a woman who was dancing by herself and, uh, and, and I invited her to join us at the table. And so she joined us and her, she was, she was hitting the drinks pretty good too. She was going for margaritas and every time the wait staff came by, she was asking for two drinks. And so he thought that was a grand idea and started asking for multiples as well. 
So, um, he told me a story of something he had done that I found pretty shady. And I said, you know, on that note, I'm going to leave now. And I got up and left. It was, it was after the party was, you know, the, the captain's stuff was over. So I was done with my filming and, um, I got up and left and the next day in the, well, as I understand it, he, he left that party. He went to the, the group table in the dining room because there was a standing reservation in the dining room for the people in this, you know, solo travelers meetup thing. And was so completely schnockered that, um, that the the rest of the people wound up trying to leave. He was he, to the point where I guess he was crying and stuff too. And uh, he was, he was completely out of control. And I was not there for that. Cause of course that was the evening that I had the uh, reservation that had conflicted with the original time I was scheduled to have the captain circle party. And so they basically told him that, you know, he's not welcome at the table anymore. And, uh, understand I wasn't there. I, I had no part of this. I hadn't talked to them about what had gone on or anything. So the next day, it's in the afternoon, I think. And I get a knock on my door and I wasn't expecting anyone. And I'm like, Hmm, who could this be? And I go look through the peephole and sure enough, it's him again at my cabin uninvited. And, you know, when he told me before that He had been there. I told him, you know, that I would have been angry if he had knocked, but apparently I hadn't been clear that the reason I would be angry was not because I had do not disturb on. It was because he was showing up uninvited to my cabin. So I opened the door and in this time I tell him in no uncertain terms that he should not be showing up at a woman's cabin who is traveling solo. It is not a good look. And I told him I need some space. Leave me alone closed the door. I was angry. It was clear I was angry. That communication should not have been in any way ambiguous. And that night he apparently turned up at the dinner and was told by the group that he was no longer welcome to sit with them because of his behavior. Um, I had not spoken to them at this point at all. The next day, he's there again. And the organizer of the group asked the wait staff or the the head maitre d', I guess he is, um, if they could have him removed from the table. But unfortunately, when they went to try and do that, uh, there was another couple at the table who was not present for him being asked not to join them again. And so they thought he was invited and said, no, it's okay, he can stay. And so instead, they uh, wound up giving the rest of us a different table. And sure enough, between courses, he shows up, sits down. It would have been, you know, after they had finished dinner and on the other table. And he's trying to jump into the conversation. And we'd pretty much agreed, you know, one of those unspoken agreements um, we we each turned to the person who was right next to us because there was four of us, and we, had a conversation with them, and we ignored what he was saying. And he had been also apparently stalking somebody else on the cruise. Uh, It was a guy, and uh, when he got up to go to the bathroom, this guy went and followed him into the men's room and told him, oh, well, I can tell that she has said things to you guys, so I'll take the hint and I won't come to the table anymore. So obviously he was blaming his ostracized, you know, being ostracized on me, even though I hadn't said anything at that point. And uh, that concerned me again, because now he's blaming me for something. So as the four of us decided after discussing what was going on between us, after he came back from the, uh, the men's room without the stalker, um, they they were all concerned as well and we all decided as a group we were going to go and make a report to security and we did at the front desk you know we we asked who who we could talk to with security and one of the guys said he was with security and we made a full report and we were able to identify what his name was and what cabin it was because um the guy he was stalking he had actually given his cabin number to 
he was able to uh, be identified for the report. But they didn't do anything. I was on an excursion. I was coming back from the port. And the lady who had joined us at the captain's circle party, she stopped me as I was walking. She said, I want to talk to you about that guy you were with. And I said, oh. And she says, yeah, he's mentally unstable. And I said, how so? She said she was at the... um, at the customer service desk trying to get change for a 20 and he walks up behind her and says I read body language and I can tell you're talking about me which is so bizarre and of course she said no she wasn't but he he apparently went off on her and was yelling at her and calling her names and this is all in front of guest services and they're not doing anything about it and and She's like, yeah, this guy is kind of unhinged. And it's like, "Mm, I kind of think so, too. Um, And then later on in the cruise, we were in the Explorer's Lounge. And the same guy he had been stalking goes to order a drink. And the waitress says, oh, you need to go to customer service. You can't order a drink. You have to go talk to customer service. And he's a little puzzled, but he goes off and does it. And then at one point he texts the other guy who's with us, who's the head of the group, and says, can you come here and corroborate this with, you know, I I need some help. And so he goes over to guest services. And I'm sitting there at the table wondering, what the heck is going on? Well, they come back. And it seems somebody has been charging drinks under his um, drink package and has met the limit. But he hasn't, you know, the guy who owns the drink package hasn't actually ordered a drink in three days. And so what's going on? And he says, you know, I bet you this guy has been ordering drinks uh, pretending to be me because he has my cabin number. And if they don't look closely, it's another guy they just you know the cabin number and they just let it go and he probably had uh, had had reached his limit and he said you know i had seen him at guest services in the morning when he was going to do something else and he was screaming at security and maybe the problem was his alcohol consumption had been cut off and he was mad about it because clearly alcohol was the main reason he was on this ship, but he didn't have a drink package. Um, so yeah, it was uh, potential that he used the information on cabin number and name and was charging drinks to somebody else's package. So there's a lot of security holes in the procedures on that ship in particular, but potentially across the line, that really needs to be addressed. Now, at one point, they called me and asked me if I wanted to escalate the report that I had made. And the timing was probably after he had been screaming at them about what was probably their their drink policy. Um, but I, at the time, I was like, no, um, I have not seen him since making the report or had any interactions with him. And so as long as that stays the same, I'm not going to escalate. And so they they said, okay. But I mean, they never did anything that I could tell until multiple people had problems with him. So that was an underwhelming response by their security to me as a solo traveling woman to report somebody making me feel this unsafe and not have them act on it. But hopefully that is something that will improve. Um, If I continue to have problems, I would certainly not go on the same cruise line with those problems. And I do have another Emerald Princess cruise booked. So I will let you know when I go on that, and we will revisit security and see if they have remedied anything at all on their ships. Have you ever had a problem with 
traveling and have someone stalking you? Let me know in the comments below. Solo Sue signing off.